Flynn by Glenn F. Francis Failner at Storyberries On a planet far from Earth, where five moons light up its night sky, there lived a race of beings capable of flying through the air, defying its planet's gravity. Its inhabitants are called Aroa, a race of winged individuals with pointed ears and stubbed noses. They grace the skies all through the day. To them, flying is as important as breathing. In a town called Callan 5, there lived a boy named Flynn. He was a happy-go-lucky child growing up. He spent his mornings running around in their garden, snot bursting out of his stubbed nose. Like any other kid in town, he spent most of his days in school, learning everything he needed to learn. And just like every kid his age, he daydreamed of flying through the air and being the best flyer of their town. However, he'd have to wait for the day he would turn nine years old, because that's when their wings were big enough for them to fly. On the morning after Flynn turned nine, the first thing he did was to run to the open grounds. It was a vast area filled with beautiful green grass, and in the middle was a rock. It had the right elevation for anyone to jump off from the very first flyers of their town. When he got there, it was filled with all the kids in their town who had turned nine. His friends were there too. All of them were taking turns jumping off the rock and flying off the ground. One by one, the fields emptied and the skies began to fill with children joyfully floating in the air. The sight of everyone flying made him excited, so he ran down the field, eagerly waiting for his turn. Flynn was the last one on the field. Everyone else had flown off far from the ground. He steadied his feet, took deep breaths, and then ran onto the rock. The top side of the rock was smooth, perfect as a jumping platform, while it had a rough surface at the bottom. When his feet came into contact with the surface of the rock, he strengthened his step. Each step was stronger than the last. When he reached the tip of the rock, he pushed himself off the rock and was airborne. He screamed with joy when he saw the distance between him and the ground. Then he noticed that he wasn't going upwards. Something was wrong. He was slowly descending until his body hit the soft grass. He could smell the soil and grass from where he lay. Flynn sat up and was confused. He was at the right age. This was the day he was supposed to fly. He was one step closer to his dream of becoming one of the best flyers of their town, like his dad. But somehow he was stuck on the ground. He looked up and saw everyone having the time of their life. He felt jealous of everybody else. So he got up and cried his way home. He came in the house with his head down. His mum greeted him when he walked in and asked how it was. He looked up and saw the excitement on her face. He didn't have the heart to tell her what happened, so he looked away. His mum quickly noticed the sadness in her son's eyes. She asked him to tell her what happened. He hugged his mum and buried his face on her chest. His tears poured endlessly from his eyes. I can't fly, mum, he said. A few days into the summer and all of the kids in town were busy flying and playing games in the sky. Meanwhile, Flynn was held up in his room, refusing to come out. He was ashamed. He was the only one in town who couldn't fly. Flightlessness was a rarity amongst the Aroans. Cases like his were few and far between generations. He spent his days looking out at the sky, watching all his friends in town playing. It was pointless to go outside. He could never play with them. They were too far off the ground. Why would anyone want to play with him on the ground when they could play in the sky? One day, his mum came into his room and brought him snacks for the afternoon. She saw him wallow in his sorrow and decided to tell him a story. She sat beside him on his bed and began her story. When I was about your age, there was a kid in town who couldn't fly. We were off playing in the sky while he was stuck on the ground. He was like you, but because it was his dream to be the best flyer in town, he didn't lock himself in his room, wishing for things to change. He knew that wishing it would never work. He knew that if he wanted to fly, he needed to make himself fly. 
So every day he would come back to the open field and try again. He kept doing this every day, whether there'd be sunshine or rain. He kept trying. He came home with bruises, but he never stopped. He never gave up. Then one day, I came to see if he was back on the field, but he wasn't there. I thought he had finally given up. I was about to fly home when I heard a scream. I didn't know where it came from, but when I looked up, I saw him. He screamed at the top of his lungs. He finally achieved what he'd always dreamed of. He was flying. I was so happy that I flew up to congratulate him. That boy grew up to be the best flyer in our town and your father. Flynn was in disbelief after hearing his mum's story. His dad, who was the best flyer in their town, started off like him. You are just like your father, and like him, it's going to take a while before you can fly, but you need to keep working on it, just like he did. You're never going to achieve anything if you stay inside your room feeling sad for yourself. You're going to have to make an effort, she said. Flynn hugged her and said, thanks, Mum. The next day, Flynn went to the field and did what his father would have done. He tried to make himself fly. Flynn left home early in the morning and came back late at night. He had a new bruise or wound every time he came home. His mum patched him up and gave him advice. He was so worn out that he slept soundly. He did this every day. As the days went by, Flynn began to notice that something was different. His wings felt different compared to the first time he turned nine. There was something in his gut that told him it was time. The next day, he came to the field ready to fly. Flynn stood on the field and got himself ready. He took deep breaths and cleared his mind. He got into the running position. When he was ready, he ran with all his might. His feet touched the tip of the rock and he jumped off. He gave it everything he had. For a moment, he was airborne. He prepared for his eventual descent back to the ground, but then he heard something. The sound was coming from the back. It was as if something was moving through the air pushing him up. He looked over and saw that the tip of his wing was moving. He realised that it was the sound of his wings. Flynn looked down and saw that he was so high up that the rock from the field was as small as his hand. He looked around and saw an endless sea of clouds. He finally did it. He was flying. Flynn flew home and called out to his mum from outside. When his mum went out the door and saw him calling to her from above, she flew to him and joined him in the sky. He thanked his mum and they flew together for some time before they came down for dinner. Before going to bed, Flynn stayed outside and watched the moons. They were bright and beautiful. He was filled with joy that day. All his effort and hard work paid off. Now he was closer to his dream of becoming the best flyer in their town. The End Thank you for reading with storyberries.com. Free stories for kids.